It is Agency Click presenting Everything Film with Film Robot, broadcasting from the Shark Club in downtown Vancouver. Joe Leary, along with Patrick Shelton on BNN Bloomberg 1410 AM, also at 103.5 FM HD3. And you can also uh, stream the program through Spotify, and you can also go to YouTube. Patrick, it is under Agency Click on YouTube, correct? You can look there, yeah, and all the podcasts and stuff. You look up Agency Click, and uh, yeah. Well, let's talk with actor Guy Wilson as we do this via Zoom down in uh, beautiful Los Angeles, California. Mr. Wilson, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I guess you've been doing a lot of Zooming uh, in light of what's gone on in the last year and a half, because as a working actor, you need to get your stuff out there. But I guess uh, rather than being in the room, probably a lot of times you're auditioning via Zoom. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, I think the new frontier and for better or for worse, the new normal are... Um, Self tapes, so recording yourself, sending them in as you know independent files, and then if producers, if casting, if network wants to go further, then you would do a a live Zoom callback or a Zoom producer session or a a test for a network via Zoom. And so there's um, it's been sort of a trial by fire, not just for myself, but for a lot of actors, a lot of professionals down here adjusting to this uh, new technology, whether we want to or not, you know. But it's got to be a bit difficult and challenging in the sense that a lot of, you know, uh, times when you're in the room, they actually get a look at you and the physical dimensions and how you stand and how you interact and and how you relate. Whereas, you know, you're sitting in an office or a bedroom and you're Zoom and they don't really get a chance to sort of read 100 percent you. Yeah, no. And it's and it's um, I I think it's frustrating. And, And I think, too, that it's just if not more frustrating for you know, for, for producers and for casting on, 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 on the other side, you know, because just as, just as much as we performers want to be seen, they want to see us. And so, um, I, I feel like, um, well, put it this way. One of the things that's, that's become, um, very normalized, very standard is, is when we submit these, uh, these audition tapes, you know, what's, what casting and producers want are, like a, a full body pan. And and that's just such a nightmare because everyone, not just actors, everyone, we're all just so uh, insecure about, you know, how, you know, how we look. And now in addition to having to prepare a performance, we have to think, okay, well, what's, you know, wh- what's the right angle? What's the right lighting? What's the right outfit? Should we wear heels? You know what I mean? Because it's so often these, these camera angles are not, are not flattering. So we, we do what we can to accommodate producers, you know, in, in, in light of the limitations of technology. Um, but you know, no matter what, you're, you're never really going to get exactly what you want. But I think we all miss being in the room, having that experience of winning a room, of, of, of going in and, and bringing your own energy and interacting. Um, that there is no substitute for that, you know, despite what we're trying to do with Zoom. It's, it sounds like you're doing more work having to set up and be your own little uh, director, producer in your, uh, everybody's doing that now a little bit more. Oh, absolutely. We're all multi hyphenates. <laughs> it's sort of, uh, it, it really is the sort of the great separator. And, and I think what's unfortunate is that um, it seems to me that to be truly competitive and, and at the top, you, you do need to have access to a quality lights, you know, a, a microphone, ideally yeah, yeah. a form proofed environment. And, and not a lot of people do. And so that, that calls into question, well, you know, where is not even calling into question, it sort of it, it highlights the disparity of privilege between between actors, you know, whether someone has a little extra resources or, or, or not. And, and that's unfortunate. Guy, I know that the uh, the Vancouver film and television industry is back booming again. I don't know if it's where it was, but this has always been kind of a hotbed. What's uh, what's Hollywood like? Is Hollywood back in full biz? Oh, certainly not back in full biz, but things are. Everybody wants things to reopen. You know, but on you know the flip side of that coin is that everyone wants to be prudent, safe, healthy, responsible, and so things are, you know, it's and here now in 2021, things are are just you know immeasurably more active uh, than they were last year. So there are productions. A lot of the productions though that are being filmed are outside of the LA market, right? So there will be you know casting will centered in LA, right? So they'll, you know, cast a, they'll, they'll, they'll cast out a net, no pun intended, for LA-based actors, but a lot of the productions will then shoot, you know, um, out of market, like, for example, like New Mexico, was Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, those, those types of states. But there are LA productions, uh, and, and also commercials are largely staying in Los Angeles, too. 
Now, I read today that the L.A. Raiders, uh, among many sports teams, are saying in order to come into our arena and see games, you got to be vaxxed. Do you think the industry, the film and television industry, is is there or going to is certainly considering being there? Well, I, I, you know, it's so funny. I read that this morning too. Um, as it relates to, to the LA film industry, I well, I'll, I'll say this, for, you know, because I'm working on a project next month, and and vaccination is required to be on. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts. I think what is. Um, Certainly, I would. I, I speculate that it's being considered that vaccination cards are being, you know, may be required to enter, you know, a movie theater, you know, or a live event. Insofar as I'm aware, in this moment, I'm not sure if that's been. Well, I know all indoor events, you know, those all require masks. I, I think. I think that is the direction. I think having a proof of vaccination is going in that direction. I noticed too, though, with the Raiders that. If you provide proof of vaccination, then you don't have to wear a mask, and, and I think that's that's a fair give and take. You know, because uh, nobody, not that people are against wearing masks, but nobody enjoys it. You know, so if that's the treat, if that's the reward for getting vaccinated, I think that that can help. Uh, that can help convince some of the people who are uh, fortunately on the fence about vaccination. <laughs> Patrick, uh, I know I've told you before, but one of my guilty pleasures is I got hooked on Coronation Street years ago. Uh, the longest running continuous show in television history, 60 plus years, 10,000 episodes. And because they have a lot of older British cast members, they were really kind of leery, pardon the pun, of having people interact. So even for love scenes, like they're having stand-ins. So guys, imagine if you will, if you're doing a love scene uh, with a character actress, it will be sort of shot from behind so that there's no way you can possibly transmit. I mean, that's obviously going to extremes. But what do you think is going to happen when when intimacy returns or is intimacy returning? And how are they distancing uh, on sets these days? I, I think my, my sense on that is that it's uh, a, a case by case um, decision process. I think that, again, because all actors, all, all set members are required to have vaccination uh, for union projects. Right. Um, I think a lot of that comes down to just the trust and comfort between the performers in question. I think if. if you know, hypothetically, if I'm doing a scene and and uh, my partner or you know the, the character's partner, or rather the actor who's portraying the other character, if you know if that individual uh, doesn't feel comfortable with physical intimacy, then then I'm I'm not going to push that. I, I you know we all want to honor one another and what we feel comfortable with, what we feel safe with. And so I I think you know in simplest terms, I think it's a case by case decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to your IMDb, Mr. Wilson, you've got some products or projects in in post production. What's uh, what's next on the agenda? And uh, more importantly, do you think the day will come when? Because there's a lot of stuff being shot on our streets of Vancouver. Do you think maybe there's a a Vancouver um, foray in your future? Oh gosh, I would just love. I would just love that. I've, I I had the the the, the um, I had the. Uh, the opportunity to visit uh, Vancouver in what was it early 2019? It was just a short week, uh, but my gosh, I love that city. That is that is a that is a top three city for me. Vancouver, San Francisco, and and Melbourne, Australia, are are three of like the just most like the healthiest, most dynamic, artistic, kind cities and communities that I've been able to visit. I would love to shoot in Vancouver. The um, it's it's a little easier said than done. Being an American, it's a little harder if you don't have a Canadian work permit. That being said, sure, of course, like it can happen. I would love for that to happen. Um, uh, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed for Vancouver. Oh, we'd love to have you. That's for sure. Yeah. What's, uh, what's coming out that we can see you in soon? Sure. So I, let's see, I'm very excited for, uh, it's, okay, so there's, there's a project, a very exciting project that uh, NBC uh, has had in the works for a while now. And, and NBC began production on this show. It's called Angeline. Uh, and it's uh, it's about uh, the the life. It's the life story. It's a limited series about the life story of this woman named Angeline who uh, became famous in Los Angeles during the the seventies and eighties um, simply for being famous. And I don't want to go too much more into the story than that. Uh, but production began in January, February, like of twenty twenty, and then I came on the show in. Let's see. It was in early March of 2020, and then literally just days before I was to be on set, everything shut down because of COVID. And so, you know, my representatives and I were thinking, "Oh my God, like, 
you know, that's, you know, let's just hope it doesn't get canceled. And, and you know, to NBC's credit, they kept it uh, alive. And now we're going back into production next month. And it's it's just such an exciting cast that I get to uh, that I get to work with. And so I'm uh, just so excited to have something to uh, something really fun to sink my teeth into in, in just a few weeks. Well, I'm excited to see it. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, because I've had the uh, good fortune to um, to be on set of The Young and the Restless years ago. And I don't think the soap industry gets enough credit for the amount of work that goes into it. I mean, you do pages and pages of dialogue. And I know that Dave shoot or shot or used to shoot well in advance of, of its air dates. But credit to uh, anybody that can keep up with that pace, because it's not like any other project. And then to mention that, that you're working with some of the the legends like you got a guy like John Aniston who's been around you know a thousand years and yeah. Indra Hall who you know, I don't want to sound you know, ages but she's she's had a good run as well but these are people that take their craft very seriously and they don't want to poop around if somebody comes on set and can't hold their own weight. Oh yeah, no, it's if if someone isn't uh, able to you know function at the highest level, you know it's it's not personal but they got to go. You know, because yeah. there, there does need to be a, a level of quality control. And when you are working with world class actors, such as D- Deidre Hall, um, John Anderson, Alfonso, you, 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 you need to, to keep that. You need to keep that level. I think that, you know, I think with soap acting, a lot of the times when people ask, well, how do you memorize all these lines? Because you're shooting, you know, 20 to 30 pages a day. The, the one thing that I'll say, not, and not to, not, to, not to, you know, make it less impressive on our part, but I think one, one aspect that does make it a little easier is that um, you're in the story. And when I say, you know, in the story, I mean, like, the actor. It's like every day, like, you, you show up to set, and it's like, I am in this world, right? And so if you know the world, if you know the story, then memorizing the lines is a little bit easier because it's, it's intuitive, right? On the flip side, you know, when, when an actor is, you know, auditioning for a new project or has multiple auditions a week, that is difficult because you are having to divine the world and, and divine the story on your own, you know, without the help of having writers on set. So it's more difficult to memorize things because you're trying to fight your way into the story on your own. Whereas on a soap set, you are you are part of the woven fabric of the story. So it's intuitive. There, 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 there is the benefit of, of intuition when you're memorizing 20 to 30 pages of dialogue a day. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if uh, you have uh, maybe a little Riverdale in your future or maybe a little Superman and Lois in your future or Batman yeah. in your future, but there's a ton of stuff going on here and uh, appreciate your time, Guy. Appreciate your work and would love to see you in Vancouver, either My gosh, thank in you so person much. or via Zoom down the road. Amen and hallelujah. I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you for having me. Okay. You take care. Take All care. Right.